Hello, stellar people, and welcome back to the channel, where this week we will continue with our ink practice. Today, going over Quiet from Metal Gear Solid 5, The Hulk, and Thor. But I think I'm just going to do two, and then maybe have Thor as a bonus. But we'll see how this goes. Lastly, and as a bonus, we'll do a quick one of Thor by John Buscema from chapter five of how to draw the marble way i really like all of these chapter images and i thought i should do these just for practice turn these pencil sketches into inks so that's what we'll be doing today now last week in our inking practice we did the average joe captain america and dr doom of John Buscema's work in drawing the Marvel way. Now, Yoji Shinkawa is one of my favorite artists that I discovered a long time ago. And these are some of the art books, the art book of Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid, the first one. And these are magnificent art books. I'll probably do a Books I Love series on these two, but I'll go over some brief examples for today. So these are the main characters for the main cast for Metal Gear Solid. And his artwork has this unusual look to it. It's rough sketchy defined in some places but also there's areas for abstraction and improv it feels like and it is glorious to look at and so he is one of my main inspirations for wanting to become better at art especially inking So of the practice this week, here we have Quiet, done by Yoji Shinkawa, who did most of the art for Metal Gear Solid series. Metal Gear, I think, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is Quiet from Metal Gear Solid 5. And I really love his inking style. It's loose, but tight, and he goes over some areas with correction fluid and there's lost and found edges and it's just beautiful beautiful work so that's what I want to try to do today character number two in this session is another thing another one of John Buscema's character that I turned into the Hulk because I think it was just a random character I should double check that but Hulk is one of my favorite characters, and I love the this huge, monstrous, <laughs> muscled dude. And so we're going to try to ink this. So first, let's get into the work of Yoji Shinkawa's Quiet from Metal Gear Solid 5. I really, really love his style. It's so many things I want to... <laughs> want to learn but first I have to I did the pencil work to get it down onto Strathmore I think smooth paper and it's a bit too dark and so I'm knocking it back just a little bit with a kneaded eraser before I get to inking proper Now for the ink work, I have some of my new brushes or brush pens, and I think I'm going to use this Cambio today. So give it a nice shake, and then we can get started with some outside, well, inking. Now to start, I usually do my regular process of starting from the upper left to lower right, and I focus mostly on the, uh, the edge lines, the outside lines, 
And then once that's all done, then I go. Once the outside lines are done, then I go back in with some spot blacks. And then after that, we'll do some correction fluid. We might do a wash, just one layer of wash, then spot blacks and then correction fluid to clean up and then do some refining lines. But we'll see all the, how all this goes because this is all for practice. Just to get some work under my belt. Now I always have to remember that this is practice. This isn't to be taken too, too seriously. Where you, this is to learn and to get better and to improve, but not to compare your ability to their ability because they have been doing inking for <laughs> years. And, you know, you're, you're starting out and you're gonna make mistakes and yours isn't gonna look like theirs, but it's what you can gather from it. That is the most important thing. If, whether it's a technique or a way they do their lines or whether how they do spot blacks or correction fluid on top or all of that. It's not supposed to be work. <laughs> it's, this is for play. This is to study. This is to get better. Not for judging yourself on fairly so sometimes I have to keep that in mind and I want you to also keep that in mind in whatever you're trying to accomplish or do or learn now for inking there are different ways of doing it for myself I'd like to learn more of the hand skills with uh, brush pens and moving on then to uh, brush brushes for inking. But there's also nowadays you can do digital inking. And I, I think this is a digital inked piece. That's how he's gotten those uh, thin stripey lines. But I, I've seen some of the, the traditional inks. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. It more depends on, you know, for the project, what's right. For me, I just want to learn hands, the hand skills. And then I can tr transition to digital inks if I, if I so desire. And in this one, one of the main things I want to learn is the negative and positive spaces. Like, where are the blacks? Where are your lightest lights? Uh, there's a slight tint to it with some highlights on it. And so I'm trying to keep all that in mind. What, well, I had to have that in mind when I was doing the penciling, but now doing the inks, you know, it takes on a different flavor, different tone, but it's always interesting what you can see in the within the human form right the shadows the shade shading techniques and all of that and i know it's going to be you know years of doing it just to get to a point where i can go yeah i think i got this and that's kind of a, a cool challenge for myself it's like i'm not too worried about being great right off the bat it's just it's like a an added <laughs> an added treat an added I, I like doing it so i'm just gonna continue doing it and learning and you know just keep going so now that i have the outlines done now I can think about the 
well I did it with this uh, Cambio brush pen but now I can think about doing the I think one layer of ink wash and then after that we'll do the spot black inks and then cleanups touch-ups and some detailing with a brush pen well a uh, correction fluid and a, a whiteout pen so let's see how this goes so far so good though so now that the image is done now i can start planning a value because there's some value or tone on the original and so to simulate that i'll do a, a one layer ink wash just to give it some value and then we'll lay uh, darker inks on top of it spot blacks on top so let's get to it now it's very strategic it looks like i'm guessing it's like a slight indication of a light and shadow uh, you can see especially in the the cheekbone area and some on the right arm and the midsection And plus, it'll help me figure out where I'll put my dark darks because it makes me think about the next step. So that's another added bonus. And here we go with the spot blacks. So I have this very an old pen that uh, I had disregarded because it flows too easily. The ink comes out much too fast for my liking. But it seems to have a great purpose with doing the spot blacks. Uh, and for practice, this is a really good, really good pen to use. I have no idea what it's called. It just has a, <laughs> some, uh, a symbol on it. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but it's good for this. So let's, <laughs> let's go. Now the, the face is, of course, the most important thing. Face, hair, and a lot of the, the neck and chest area are very segmented out. A, a lot of little, little bits, and I can work with it with uh, correction fluid if I get into, uh, have issues, but more or less, I think I should be fairly fine. And we're just gonna define out where our spot blacks are and let's go. But of note, I think what I like about Yoji Shinkawa's work is that it's a, it's detailed well, exceedingly detailed, but he uses uh, correction fluid and spot blacks, some value stuff. It's really a multi, a multi-tool <laughs> endeavor. And that's what I think I like about, it's really, really involved but you can see everything the uh, shapes are well defined you can tell it's a person it's light delicate but also uh, bold and interesting and that's what i really like about his work hopefully this turns out <laughs> the, the way i i hope but that's what we're practicing for. Now, once the upper part is done, I feel like I can exhale a little bit <laughs> uh, because I, I've kind of find, found a rhythm 
and I can go in knowing that, okay, it's not, <laughs> the hardest part is, is over, I, I feel like. And now I can, I've got a flow. Uh, the hardest part now would be that I'm starting to feel a little fatigued. If you concentrate for, on anything for a good amount of time, your mind starts to uh, just, you know, you start to make mis more mistakes, more accidents will happen. So I try to keep everything short and contained within a short amount of time. But I want to get this done, so let's keep going. And now that we're finishing up on the spot blacks, we can start to think about the, I don't know what this final detail is. Is it the sun or a moon behind her foot? Uh, but we're going to use some old brushes, some old, very worn. Uh, and I think they're, they're going dead. I think I've used up most of the juice in them, but they're good for uh, making I don't know what you would call it. This scuff, this scuffing, texture-like uh, black areas that are uh, on this, we'll call it the sun, this sun design. And so I'm roughing that in and then I'll lay uh, some more spot blacks on top. That's mostly on the what, left, right side of the image or right side that sun which is darker than the left side. But that's why I usually keep old brushes because you never know when you need some very rough textures. So I usually keep my dying <laughs> old busted uh, <laughs> tools just in case, you know, as a texture brush. So I don't know if it's an artist thing, it probably is. But we usually keep stuff just just in case, you know, <laughs> you'll find a use for it. And I have. And now I think that is just about some of the final touches. And overall, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> I, I knew it would be uh, fairly a pushing of my, my limits with ink, because uh, I'm doing things that I don't normally do, which is always good when you're trying to practice and learn. But yeah, it's, it came out better than I expected. Now I could go in with uh, some correction fluid, a white jelly roll pen, and then touch it up and clean up some things. But overall, I think this is, I think I pretty much got it. And I think I learned a little something about, uh, usually if you, uh, artists have different ways of doing things. If you try to break their style or how they do things down, there's a lot to learn from every artist that you come across. Even if you're you're copying or you know mimicking mimic their style, just to see what you can find out and learn for yourself. And yeah, I, I learned some things, so that's always good. And that was Yoji Shinkawa's Quiet from Metal Gear Solid 5. And all the tools that I've used was this spot black pen that I don't know what it's called, the Cambio, an old jacked up brush, and an ink wash layer. And those were some of the tools that I used to make this reproduction of Quiet Yoji Shinkawa.
And so now on to the Hulk. So next up is this Hulk. And this time I'll be using the Tachikawa brush pen. And this started off as a random goon sketch by I think John Buscema. As I was just cruising the internet looking for, uh, looking through his catalog of art. And I just like, hmm, that looked, <laughs> I don't know, I just, I turned it into the Hulk and I've always had a, I think the Hulk is cool. Just this massive, hulking mass of green muscle just destroys everything. And I, you know, that crude, you can kind of be crude and rough with it and not at all, uh, I don't know, delicate and refined. This is all, I guess, energy is what I'm, I'm hoping to, to go for. While quiet is, you know, nice and there's a lot of little tiny lines and delicate things. And this is just destructive. <laughs> I don't even know if I could get that onto paper, but just raw destructive power. I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's just go. Now for this Hulk, I'm doing mostly the outside lines, much like I usually do for my regular inking work. And then I'll go in later with some texture lines and all that, but I just want to get the basic shape of the Hulk. Now, after I've gotten all the outside lines off screen, I went in and did the, the detail lines and all that. And now I'm going to map out the muscle structure and the darks with this, uh, a value, uh, with an, a light ink wash. I really like, I really like those eyes, but <laughs> just ignore where the shadows are. So hopefully it'll, uh, when I put down the spot blacks, I kind of know where I'm going. Now, what, what's cool about doing large, brutish, monstrous characters is that the inking can be slightly rougher, more textured, and not so delicate and refined. So I can go more, it feels a lot faster because I don't have to, you know, meticulously plan out where all my lights and darks are and all of that. I can go in and hit the areas that need to be hit because it's the Hulk. It's not, <laughs> it's, uh, he's not like a, a pretty princess where you have to, you know, think about <laughs> cutting and whatnot. So now after the ink wash, I have these old crusty <laughs> brush pens that are really, really dying. And so now I'm, doing the pants because the pants are just stretched material over this huge hulking frame, which really doesn't really make sense because how does this pants? Anyways, we're, I just wanted a, a bit of a texture to the pants to break it up a little bit to differentiate it from the skin color or skin tone. So that's all I'm doing here.
So then after that, now it's time for spot inks. Now, because it's the Hulk, and the greatest thing about the Hulk, since he's a monstrous hulking figure, he doesn't need all the fine detail lines. And I can go fairly quickly and fairly roughly on this whole character. So I'm trying to break things up. And once I get to the real spot blacks, I can kind of just go in and do what I feel because it's not unlike quiet say which has a uh, delicate lines and you know a feminine form the hulk is just a, a brute so it's i can go quicker and i'm kind of just making a lot of stuff up about where <laughs> where i want to go with some you know hints because of the the ink wash but I can be looser, rougher, and more unrefined because it matches the character. Which is probably one of the great things about the whole. Now, one thing I will say on this Hulk piece is that I sometimes wish I had a better plan for it because right now I'm just moving and grooving. I'm just doing whatever feels right, but sometimes I need a better plan, which is more of a, a tighter pencil to work off of so that I know exactly where I want to go before laying down the inks. For this practice, it's it's fine, but I think next time I'd rather have a a more developed tight pencil to know exactly where I'm going and what effects and and uh, more focused, I think. But for the Hulk, it's not bad. <laughs> And that was the Incredible Hulk. I really like the eyes. But I like, you know, where the eyes are just some gleaming. So that was the Ink Practice Week 2 with various characters I just wanted to practice on. Quiet from Metal Gear Solid 5 by Yoji Shinkawa and the Incredible Hulk. Now next week, I have a plan, but we'll see if I can get it done in a week. So until then, I would like you to take care, keep shining, and I will see you next week. Plus there is a bonus Thor at the end of this, but you can stay if you want. But until then, bye bye. All right, so now just to finish this out, I'm just gonna have a bonus section of chapter five, uh, how to draw the Marvel way Thor image that I really wanna do. I'm not gonna really have any talking over it. I'm just gonna let this play out. And if you wanna watch, you may do so. But until next time, I'll see you later.
And that was Thor from the chapter five illustration from how to draw the Marvel way. I really like the spot blacks on this one. So thank you for joining me and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.